Alright, so I just got through watching a Game of Thrones on HBO, the big premiere. And here are my thoughts on it. I can honestly say I loved it. Um, in a very sort of devil's advocate type of way. Um, the first episode is essentially faithful to the book. Uh, the only thing new that it's doing is just bringing uh, visuals along with the tale that we've already read, if you have read the first book, that is. So it's not really, dialogue-wise, not really adding or taking away anything from it. The only bonuses that we have are the, the background and uh, a lot of action to go along with the story now. Uh, I'm going to take the first couple of minutes to just lay out how I like the show so far, and then... Uh, probably, I can't really speculate what I got right now. I'm going to say maybe after the 3.54 minute mark, then I'll get into spoilers. So, uh, if you don't want too much spoiled, if you haven't seen it yet, you might want to cut off after that point. All right, first off, uh, following the story, excellent job. Uh, I did have quite a few surprises in here uh, with stuff, and I'm actually kind of surprised at how they moved uh, some of the story along real quick. Um, I thought, uh, as far as first impressions go, uh, Sean Bean, excellent job as Ned Stark, although we haven't seen him really act outside of just level-headed and cool too much. Um, I love the kids, I love, uh, the actress portraying, uh, Caitlin Stark. Um, John was alright to me, in all honesty, uh... I think probably my only complaint here, this is not really much of a spoiler, is that they've taken the characters and bumped them up in age a couple of years. Uh, case in point, Bran, who has been bumped up from 8 to 10, and he actually looks like a little girl. Uh, John has been bumped up in age and even has a 5 o'clock shadow. He's supposed to be 15, 16 in the book, and he only looks like he's maybe 21. And that's probably my only complaint with it. Um... Aside from that, though, everything looks great. Uh, I especially enjoyed the opening sequence where we had uh, sort of the the ghosts or the uh, the undead that were being tracked in the prologue of the series. Um, I also love the opening title sequence to it. Um, I'm very impressed by it because basically what they do is that they take and they have like this really cool. Uh, it's kind of like an axis, like picture a globe that has the uh, the measurement around it, but uh, the globe is not there. They sort of have uh, the designs of a lot of the, the house animals uh, embedded into metal, and then you have like this huge thing that opens up in the middle with a Game of Thrones, and then you have a dragon head and a wolf head on one side, and then there's the stag and the lion on the other, which is uh, very awesome. And uh, the opening itself, when they spread out, is... Uh, basically just spending two to three minutes panning over a huge map of Westeros, which is done in uh, semi-CG with a... Uh, they take and they raise up the buildings. It looks kind of like a pop-up book as you're skimming over it, but all the buildings have gears inside of it, and it kind of just rises up out at you, and it's, I mean, it's just a excellent, excellent opening to the series as well. Um, did have a few surprises in there with uh, some actors I didn't know. Uh... Cal Drogo in this. I'm not sure who he is. He looks very familiar to me in some ways. Uh, and I got surprised when uh, Jorah Mormont showed up in this and introduced himself to uh, Danny. And uh, it took me a little bit to realize that he was actually uh, the guy who played Dr. Isaacs in uh, Resident Evil 3, which is uh, very cool. So I, I really like to see what they're going to do with him uh, on throughout the series and uh, how well he portrays that character. Um... And that's just it, uh, Devil's Advocate-wise, without giving away too much, uh, it looks great. Uh, I especially love Tyrion in this. Uh, it turned out even better than what I thought it would. Uh, Peter Dinklage does a uh, great, great job acting in there. I love this conversation that passes in between uh, him and Jon Snow at the party about why Jon couldn't attend. And they're talking about, uh, about how much both of them are alike because they're bastards in their father's eyes. Um, 
And there was also this kind of uh, cool moment with uh, Tyrion as well because we know how he, he shows a little bit of how smart he is, but at the same time we find out how much of a hedonist he is as well. Um, there's a part where he shows up late to uh, to uh, Winterfell, and that he's actually dropped off at the local whorehouse, uh, and uh, like his brother Jamie comes in and. Basically, Tyrion says, you know, he's going to take a long time showing up to the feast, and it's like, well, you better hurry up and get there. And then, like, Jamie opens the door and calls in for, like, five more uh, whores to come in there. I just thought that was hilarious. But, uh, yeah, all in all, from uh, that point of view, it's really great. And from here on out now, we begin to get into spoilers, so if you don't want it spoiled too much for you, uh, get out. Okay, first off. I am extremely surprised at how quick that they jumped into uh, the typical HBO fashion of using the words fuck and showing off as much TNA as they did in this show. Uh, this is definitely not your mom and pop's fantasy stories that they had growing up. Um, also, kudos to this too, because I believe uh, when they showed the sort of the engagement party for uh, Cal and Danny's we wedding, uh, I actually saw my first disembowelment shown on television, which is actually kind of interesting. Um, and basically, it was great stuff. Uh, we also get told right off just how much of a bastard, uh, and not a born out of family bastard, but just, you know, like a bastard bastard that uh, Danny's brother Viserys is. Uh, I will not repeat what he said to her to establish how cold he was, but if you see it, uh, you will understand what I'm getting at, uh, of how much he thinks of his sister, uh, that she's just no more than a tool for him to get his throne back. Um, another thing that I was also surprised at in the start of the show is uh, how quick that uh, uh, Cersei and Jamie established that they are already responsible for the murder of John Aaron. Um, I thought that they would kind of do like the books and sort of build up a mystery, but uh, instead they just come out, and I think it was in like the first 20, 25 minutes of the show that they just go ahead and said, uh, it was in between each other in a, you know, a whispering conversation, but they just still said, you know, D do you think they'll suspect us or something like that? And I was just kind of surprised at how quick uh, that they threw that out there. Uh I'm really interested to see, I, I already know what's going to happen, but I'm still interested to see uh, how they're going to portray uh, Bran's fate after the fall from the tower after Jamie pushed him out when uh, Jamie discovered, uh, or when uh, Bran discovered uh, Jamie and Cersei's um, little secret. Um, aside from that, uh, all the characters in there are pretty much portrayed the way I thought they would be. Tyrion is awesome. Sansa is a dumbass. Uh, Caitlin seems likable well enough to her family, but the actress playing her still gives a very good subtle hint at how much of a bitch that she is towards uh, Jon Snow, and uh, I just loved it. Um, which, by the way, too, when I saw uh, the, the deserters beheading at the beginning of the show, uh, I hope that they, that uh, the studio actually finds a weapons company that will actually duplicate the ice sword that we saw Ned Stark use in this. Uh, it looks very awesome. I wouldn't mind owning uh, a copy of it myself. It will look very good on my wall. But yeah, all around this is a great show, um, and I have no complaints about it. I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of the season, and I think you'll enjoy it too once you've seen it.